Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Longo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today I'm going to be reacting to the prophetic legacy of Muhammad. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. And if you make a survey around the world, you'll find that the people's knowledge about the Prophet ﷺ is less than 0.0001%. And this is shocking. To see so much ignorance about the most influential person to have ever walked the earth. And this is not said by a Muslim. It's also shared by non-Muslims. So who was the Prophet ﷺ? Beside being a messenger and a prophet of Allah, as the Muslims claim, what was he like? Sa'd ibn Hisham asked Mother Aisha, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, and she said, O oh, mother of the believers, tell me about the character of the Prophet ﷺ. She said, don't you read the Quran? He said, yes, I do. She said, then the character of the Prophet ﷺ was the Quran. What does that mean? Imam Nawawi says, this means that he acted in accordance with the Quran, adhering to its limits, following its etiquette, paying heed to its lessons and parables, pondering its meanings and reciting it properly. This is how your character becomes the Quran. Let's look at those who describe the Prophet ﷺ. What did they say? They said that he was the most forbearing among the people, the most courageous, the most fair and just, and he was the most chaste among the people. Never ever in his life touched a woman who's not his wife, who's not his mahram, who's not his right hand possession. The Prophet ﷺ, during his daytime used to fix his sandals, patch his garments, serve his wives, and he was the most bashful of all people. He would answer the invitation of the rich and the poor the free and the slaves, and he would accept any gift, even if it were as little as a drink of milk. Yet he would reward those who gave it to him with something better. He would never eat from charity because he was a prophet, yet he was never arrogant or too proud to accept the invitation of a poor person or a slave he would become angry only for the sake of allah and not for his own sake he would execute what is right even if this brings harm to himself and to his companions never ever in his life did he ever beat a woman or a child he used to starve days because he did not have food and he used to tie a stone on his stomach. He would not be too proud to eat anything that is halal, even if it were the hooves of a ram or some barley with stinking ghee that was presented to him. Whenever invited to a feast, he would attend, he would visit the sick. He would follow the funerals and he would walk alone between his foes and enemies without anyone guarding him. He was the most humble of people. He was, he was filled with tranquility without any arrogance. He was the most eloquent and given the concise of speech without prolonging his talks. He did not care for anything in this life in this world whatever he found he used to wear 
sometimes walking in his sandals, sometimes walking barefooted. Sometimes he may walk without a cloak or without a turban or anything on his head, which was custom among the Arabs. He used to be so humble that he could not care whether he's wearing something on his head or not. He would ride whatever there was available without any arrogance, without any pride, without showing off. So he would ride a camel, he would ride a horse, he would ride a donkey, a mule. And if he found someone who needed a ride, he would also invite him to ride behind him. He used to love beautiful fragrances and used to abhor and hate any foul smell. Nobody ever smelled anything foul from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sits with the poor, he eats with the needy, and he honors people for their character. And any of his next of kin, he would be kind to them, he would connect their kinship without preferring them over someone who's better than them. Whenever someone did something wrong and apologized, he would accept his apology. He used to joke with his companions, but never ever lie. He would joke saying truth. He would laugh or let us rephrase that. He would smile without breaking into laughter. And he would see people play lawful games and he would approve of that and he would not reprimand them for it. He would raise his wife as reported a number of times and he would play with them. His time was always filled either with something for the sake of Allah or something for the betterment of his life. Never ever he was idle doing nothing. He would never look down upon a poor person for his poverty. He would never resent a sick person for his illness and he would never fear a king for his kingdom. He's forgiving. He forgave those who killed his uncle, Hamza, and who killed his companions and mutilated them and set them all free. He encourages his companions to forgive and to pardon as he did with Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, when his cousin, Mustah, slandered his own daughter, Abu Bakr's daughter, who was the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. He slandered her, yet the Prophet encouraged Abu Bakr to forgive him. He would be in the most sacred place of all, in the masjid, and a nomad comes and urinates in the middle of the masjid. His companions want to beat him up. The Prophet says, leave him, leave him. After he finishes, he calls him and he advises him in a very kind and gentle fashion. He had nine wives at a time and they were so jealous. They caused a lot of headache and problems for him, yet he never faced the jealousy with other than love, compassion and mercy. And he was always just and fair between them all. When he spoke, the words came sweeter than honey. He was easygoing, nice person to be with, never rude, never aggressive, never saying foul things. He was proud without arrogance. He was strong without violence. He was merciful without weakness. He hears Aisha swearing and cursing the Jews for saying bad things to the Prophet ﷺ, and he reprimands Aisha, not the Jews. And he says to her, Allah does not like someone who uses foul, foul language, Aisha. She said, don't you hear what they're saying, O Prophet of Allah? He says, yes, I do hear. They make dua and supplicate against me, and I say, wa alaykum. So Allah answers my supplication and does not answer theirs. And he does not have to go out of his way to show them that he had heard what they said and that he knows what they 
intended. So this is in Arabic known as taghafl, which is in English looking the other way. And the Prophet ﷺ did a number of incidents this way so that he would not pick up on people. Why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? Like we usually do. He was asked once, O Prophet of Allah, the servant who's a slave working for us, how many times should we pardon him per day? So the Prophet said, you should pardon him 70 times a day. 70 times. If your servant makes a mistake, move on, pardon it. Look the other way. We hold a court hearing for our servant or a driver or a maid if they ever make a mistake. That's why Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be peace with him, accompanied the Prophet ﷺ for 10 years. Never ever the Prophet asked him, why didn't you do so and so for something that Anas did? Or ask him, shouldn't you have done so and so for something he did not do? He would always move on, look the other way and not stop and question Anas for everything that he did or he did not do. Now, if we were to take the rest of the night just talking and speaking about the Prophet Alaihissalam's virtues and beautiful attributes and how he lived and how he communicated with his people, it wouldn't be sufficient. The whole night wouldn't be sufficient. But it is important for us, especially in the midst of this vicious attack, specifically upon the Prophet ﷺ and on Islam in general. It is important that we discuss a number of issues. Number one. Allah Azza wa Jal has exalted the mentioning of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, where Allah says in the Quran and raised high for you your repute. So the reputation of the Prophet Alayhi Salam, the name of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam is exalted to the extent that no one can undermine this or look down upon our prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and if you watch and look around you you will find that the name and the reputation the repute of the prophet alayhi salam, is mentioned 24 hours seven days a week around the globe there is not a single corner of the earth that his name is not being mentioned all the lines of the longitude and altitude or whatever they call them there is always a place where muslims call the adhan five times a day and they make the iqama five times a day every single inch of this earth round the clock worldwide is always mentioned sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he doesn't need us to stand up for his honor or to defend him he doesn't need us it is us who need it he doesn't need us to say anything whether it was a french frog or a danish pastry who cares his repute and name has been exalted and raised those who dared and said things about him look at them the danish cartoons 2005 show me one person that knows who steered that campaign or those who drew these heinous drawings nobody knows them. they all went into the trash can of history Look at those who abused the Prophet 
among the idol worshippers 15 centuries ago does anybody know their names no rarely you'll find someone calling their names but tell me and show me someone who does not know the prophet and who does not know his biography his seerah everybody knows it so the prophet doesn't need us it is we who need to stand firm for his reputation and to honor him otherwise life has no meaning one of the companions of the prophet was captivated was held as a prisoner of war and was about to be executed abu sufyan ibn harb the leader of the idol worshippers at the time he was a mushrik may allah be pleased with him he accepted islam later on he said to that companion would you hope and wish that you are back in medina surrounded by your children with your wife in your home safe and sound and the prophet is being here in your place to be executed would you like a swap like this do you have any remorse do you have any regret what did the companion say he said by allah i would not want to be among my children and family with my wife in the warmth of my house while the prophet والسلام, in his house being pricked by a thorn in his foot not to be executed even a single thorn to be pricking his foot i would not want to be with my family no i'd rather be beheaded and executed rather than him getting a single thorn in his foot this is the love of the of the companions to the prophet and this is the love we have towards our prophet alayhi salatu wassalam the way to love your prophet alayhi salatu is to know him and the way to know him is to read his biography and i find i found it fascinating to see the different books written on his biography and i was honored with the grace of allah to finish his biography a number of times in different occasions in both Arab, arabic and english and the more you go through it the more that you love him you cannot help it Akhi, when i hear about sheikh abdul aziz ibn baz one of the scholars of our contemporary times died 90 plus worked as a mufti as a judge as a scholar teaching heading the medina university uh, islamic university in medina and doing so many blessed things in his life never to have taken a day off yeah and someone in his position i would have guessed that maybe once uh, um, a year he would go to a resort to the maldives to the seashells to um uh, can or needs to somewhere to yeah freshen up the guy was 24 7 working for the sake of allah and allah Azza wa is his judge every single asr for all of his known life he used to pray in a masjid he has to give a, a small talk afterwards and he would always occupy his time with mentioning and memorizing allah who is abdul aziz ibn baz next to the prophet if you read his biography and learn his daily routine if you hear the stories narrated by his companions what he did with them how he acted with them his wives his children his uh, 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 the, the children of of the masses the non-muslims the newly reverted muslims his enemies you get a 360 degree about who was who the Prophet was. And one of the most beautiful contemporary books that I would highly recommend you guys to buy is a book by my friend and brother, Sheikh Muhammad, ibn Sal Muhammad Salih al Munajid. Sheikh al Munajid, the founder of IslamQA.info, well known Sheikh. And this book is just big volume. 
all authentic hadiths how he treated them in english in arabic it gives you a deep insight how the prophet dealt with all categories of the society his wives his uh, uh, offspring his grandchildren the children of the muslims the newly reverted the uh, enemies the sinners of the muslims and how he dealt with them it gives you an insight and not only that this is not something that is a commodity a luxury a, a, a luxury this is something essential in your religion the prophet told us about the three questions in the grave and this is why imam muhammad ibn abdul wahab compiled a short booklet about the three principal fundamentals Usul. and allah Azzawajal has blessed me and favored me to finish explaining this booklet and it's on youtube in about 15 series about an hour uh, each and it's free on the on youtube you can watch it these three questions are the questions that will make it or break it if you don't know who's your lord and you cannot define that and you don't know what is your religion and the third question who is this man who was sent to you and if you're unable to say his name i don't know his father's name i don't know anything about his life i just hear people say muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what else so reading his biography is essential reading his sunnah the way he ate the way he talked the way he sat the way he slept the way he answered the call of nature the way he had intimacy with his uh, 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 spouses the way he dealt with others all of the way he prayed the way he fasted the more you get to know his sunnah and implement it the more you gain this precious love filling your heart towards the prophet so that when you are asked what is the most thing you desire in this world you would say to see the prophet to hold his hand to kiss his hand and to be with him then you get to love the prophet and you will be granted your wish to be with him on the day of judgment to be resurrected under his flagship without this knowledge without this love filling your heart being more than your love to your own parents your own children your own spouse your own soul without this love you are not a true believer um the story of muhammad if you haven't seen it is something that you want to go out there and watch he's been portrayed in such a way that um you like his attributes the way he's a people's people like um he was one with the community he never thought he was higher than anyone else he fought with the people ate with the people and uh, was understanding of the people and it's just amazing my favorite story of him is actually um the story of him leading up to when he married khadija that's one of my favorite stories and how um, the word was actually revealed to him favorite 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 i mean all of us have different favorite stories of him but otherwise if you haven't seen those go out there and find them on the internet in fact you can find some on our page and just listen to to them you're going to be very amused and you can tell from this video how much not just this video and comments in the past as well how much people actually love muhammad some people actually say they love muhammad more than their parents so that's really something i don't know if that's i don't know if that's all right i have no idea but otherwise that's how much people love him there's a lot of things said and that one thing is it's the first time that i'm actually hearing that the wives were actually jealous and um so if there, there's a question i wanted to ask but if there's a video on that feel free to suggest it and i'll ask my question then 
otherwise i love how he handled every um conflict or anything such as the wise being jealous as calm as possible he didn't pick sides he was always neutral wasn't looking to fight or beat anyone but was always willing to teach people and was always res responding with kindness my question to you guys is since you love muhammad so much you've seen how he was treating people and everything else my question is do you guys after loving muhammad so much believe that you treat each and every person with kindness because you can't admire someone and not want to be like them and yeah so that's my question do you think you're treating people as good as muhammad something keeps on getting in my mouth do you treat people like muhammad was treating everyone with no judgment with kindness and everything else i love an answer to that otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video